Hi, I'm Todd Miller of AskToddMiller.com. This is my sixth in a uh, series of videos on buying a new roof. In this particular video, I'm going to look at the various types of metal roofing that are available today uh, as choices for you to consider uh, for your home. One of the great things about metal roofing uh, is the fact that there are is a wide variety of products available. Um, you can choose from a number of different looks of products, a number of different styles, a number of different metals. Um, however, at the same time, that can all get rather confusing sometimes in terms of figuring out uh, what's uh, best for your home and uh, figuring out what's going to fit best in your neighborhood. There's a lot of different factors. So I want to look at those and, and kind of uh, talk you through those and help you understand those. Um, first of all, there's a, there's a wide variety of products out there. Now, when you think of metal roofing, you may think of things that are what we call vertical seam metal roofing. This is roofing that uh, you stand at the bottom of the roof and you look up at it and you see these seams that, that rise vertically from the bottom of the roof up to the top. Um, we're going to talk more about that. That's one of the, the styles of metal roofing that you might see. Um, there's also products out there that look like cedar shake. There are products that look like tile, barrel tile, clay tile. There are products that look like slate. There are great products that even look like asphalt shingles. Um, so as a homeowner, uh, you can get the benefits of metal and yet get it in a variety of different looks. Uh, to be able to achieve something that's going to look great on your home and also fit well in your neighborhood. So that's one of the things I like. There's, there's just a wide variety of products out there. Now, as you start cons to consider metal roofing, one of the first things to consider is what type of metal you want to use on, on your roof. And generally speaking, there are two types of metal being used predominantly in residential metal roofing today. Uh, one is steel and the other is aluminum. Um, steel roofing actually comes in two various types. You've got what's called galvanized steel. Uh, galvanized steel is standard uh, steel that has a coating on both sides of the metal for corrosion resistance and with galvanized steel that coating is primarily zinc. Um, also some aluminum in that alloy as well. The other type of steel that's commonly used today is what we call galvalume. Uh, galvalume steel, same thing, it's, it's a steel core and then it has an anti-corrosive coating, metallic coating on both sides of the steel. In this particular case with galvalume, uh, that coating is primarily aluminum, has some zinc and some other elements in it as well, but it's primarily an aluminum alloy that's on the uh, galvalume that's protecting it from corrosion. And then, of course, you have aluminum roofing. Uh, aluminum roofing is uh, anti-corrosive all by itself. Now, after you, you deal with steel and aluminum, you've got some exotic metals out there as well. There is solid copper you can choose from. Uh, there are products uh, like stainless steel. Uh, there are products like stainless steel coated with copper. Uh, there are also even more exotic products out there like uh, turn-coated steel and titanium. Um, these are all higher-end metals. They're going to cost more money. Um, but they are known also for their beauty uh, and also for their corrosion resistance. Uh, another metal I didn't mention was rolled zinc. Uh, another thing with these higher end metals is these can often be used as natural metals. Uh, with steel and aluminum, now we're going to talk more about this later in the video, but with steel and aluminum oftentimes the metal is painted before it's formed into roofing. Uh, however, with these other exotic metals, again copper, zinc, uh, copper coated stainless, stainless steel, turn uh, coated metal, uh, those are all actually uh, can be installed unpainted. Um, now let's talk a little bit about coatings. Let's talk about the paint finishes that are used on steel and aluminum roofing. Um, basically there are, are four different ways to do this. One is, is mill, what we call mill finish. That would be uncoated metals that we just talked about. Not normally done with steel and aluminum. Um, you do see some galvanized steel out there that's without a coating. Now you also see a product out there with galvalume that actually has an ac a clear acrylic coating on it. And the clear acrylic coating is designed to provide some protection to the galvalume, uh, especially during transportation and during installation. Doesn't really provide anything in terms of, well, it provides a little bit in terms of long term durability, but not a whole lot. So basically, we've got mill finish, we've got a clear coat available on galvalume, and then you get into the colored coatings. The colored coatings, the, the paint finishes, uh, come in a couple different ranges of coatings. Uh, one, the lower end type uh, products are what's called a, a standard polyester finish. Uh, then we get, get a little bit better with a super polyester. Super polyesters are basically uh, polyester chemistry and they have uh, very high grade fade and uh, fade resistant uh, pigments in them to, to help those super polyesters hold color uh, over the long term better than a standard polyester will. 
The highest grade of paint finish is what we call PVDF, polyvanillidine fluoride, sold under the trade names of Kynar 500 and Hylar 5000. Um, the, the PVDF finishes use uh, fluorite, the, the uh, mineral fluorite, as their resin, uh, which provides a great deal of bonding power. It just creates a very, very tight molecular bond, and that helps to achieve chalk resistance on the roof. Uh, the Kynar finishes also only use these very, very high-quality pigments, uh, much like the super polyesters, and that way they're very fade-resistant as well. Now, the other thing that's available today in many Kynar finishes are reflective pigments. Uh, so you can buy products that even in dark colors have specially treated pigments to reflect radiant heat and keep your attic naturally cooler. That can uh, reduce your cooling load by 20, uh, as much as 20% or even more in some cases with these reflective pigments that are again are available in the Kynar coatings. The last type of coating I want to talk about are aggregate or stone coatings. And many of the shake, tile, uh, shingle product, facsimile products uh, use stone coatings, which are somewhat similar to the stones that are on asphalt shingles, uh, but, but instead of being uh, bonded to an asphalt or a fiberglass base like they are with standard shingles, instead those stones are bonded to a steel base for, for extra durability. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about a couple different basic types of metal roofing. Uh, you've got vertical seam products, which I talked about earlier, and that's the products that when you stand at the bottom of the roof and you look up, you see all these uh, lines that lead from the bottom of the roof up to the peak. The next type are what we call modular products. These products typically run horizontally on the roof, and they may have a, a shake uh, look or a shingle look or a slate look or a tile look. Um, and, and we call these modular products because rather than come in long sheets that go from the bottom of the roof up to the top, they come in smaller modular panels that install on the roof. Now, both with vertical products and modular products, we've got a couple of options there as well. Uh, we've got products that actually interlock with each other and they actually actively engage with each other. And we also have products that, that where the panels uh, overlap on two or possibly more sides. Um, on, on the vertical seam type products, the interlocking products are frequently referred to as standing seam, um, the, whereas the overlap products, the products that are just go down in sheets that overlap side to side, uh, are called through fastened products. Um, through fastened products are used a lot on agricultural applications, but they're also used residentially as well. Uh, with the modular panels, you've got, again, panels that interlock on all sides. Uh, you also have some modular panels that uh, do not interlock on all sides. Some of them have a side overlap, and some of them also uh, install on top of battens uh, that install on your roof, basically uh, one by twos or, or two by twos that install horizontally on the roof, and the, the panels go down on top of that, and the panels just overlap typically over the battens rather than actually interlock. Um, now, uh, back to the standing seam. Um, there's a couple different styles of standing seam as well. Uh, again, these panels interlock on their, their vertical seams, and you've got standing seam panels that have clip fasteners, meaning that the panels install using uh, fastening clips that fasten to the roof, and the fastening clips allow the panels to expand and contract with uh, metal's natural movement during temperature changes. You also have standing seam panels that have a nail flange down the side instead of using clips. The nail flange products are a little bit lower end product. Um, they they, they don't maybe have quite as much allowance for the expansion and contraction and, and the thermal movement of the metal with temperature changes. Now, two other basic types of metal roofing I want to talk about are structural and non-structural. Structural metal roofing can, can go down on tops of purlins that are run horizontally uh, on the roof, and they do not need solid decking underneath them. And so the plywood or the OSB that's up on your roof would not have to be there in order to install a structural style metal roof. The other type is what we call non-structural. Non-structural metal, uh, metal roofs are also called architectural metal roofs. These products require some sort of decking underneath the roof uh, for, for solid fastening. Um, just tell you my, my opinion, um, the, uh, the structural roofs, the ones that do not re require decking, are sometimes used residentially. I absolutely do not suggest using those products residentially um, because having that bare metal exposed to the inside of your attic can potentially set you up for, for condensation problems, particularly if you don't have a real well-ventilated attic. It just opens you up to a whole new can of possibilities and, and things that could go wrong. So I do not suggest installing the structural metal roofs, the ones that do not require decking. <coughs> I do not uh, suggest installing those residentially. Um, 
Another basic difference between metal roof types, though, is, is you've got exposed fasteners and you've got concealed fasteners. Especially some of the vertical through fasten agricultural panels have exposed fasteners. Some of the modular panels, especially the batten mounts, batten, batten mounted ones, and uh, especially some of the the tile profiles. Uh, have exposed fasteners as well and you'll have to make a decision for yourself whether with your metal roof you want to have concealed fasteners or exposed fasteners some of that information on on the some of these differences and what i think is better than than others uh, is shared on my website at asktoddmiller.com that's a-s-k-t-o-d-d-m-i-l-l-e-r.com um, now finally i want to talk a little bit um, uh, about uh, as you as you think about metal roofing, I mean, how do you decide which of these products is best for you? Really, I suggest going out and looking at, at products, um, seeing products in your area of these different types are installed, so that you get to see what they look like. And then again, you have to consider for yourself the level of quality you want in terms of whether you want uh, exposed fasteners or concealed fasteners, uh, the type of coating that you want on your product, and the, the level of quality you want there. Um, Thank you very much for tuning in to uh, episode six, uh, if you will, of Buying a, a New Roof, uh, sponsored by AskToddMiller.com. I invite you to visit my website. Feel free to ask me questions. Feel free to email me anytime at Todd, T-O-D-D, at AskToddMiller.com. Thank you again for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in episode seven.